before. So have a good lunch. See you at 1 o'clock. David wanted me to do in this section was to try to um, uh, work with, show you guys how we're going out to the market right now. And we have a new tool that we're going to, that is officially being announced at this conference. Some people have used it. It's been like in a pilot program version. And we've actually used it with a bunch of customers and found it to be very useful in illustrating the value proposition of Enron and how we can show people that we're, we're doing something that is unique and how they can use what we've got for them to create their own services around. So what um, I'm trying to do is a couple of things. One is show you about the tool, but I'm going to use the tool as if you were a customer in, in instances so that you can see how you would use the tool. And um, also what we want to do is have you be able to go online and use this tool because it is a broadband enabled e-powered application as well as we will have CD-ROMs tomorrow for people to take with them of this version of the tool. So <clears throat> what we're looking to do is eat our own cooking. We want to, phone's off, we, need, we want to um, be able to go in front of a customer and show them that we're actually using a broadband rich media experience to illustrate our value proposition to them and to transfer knowledge more rapidly about us and to allow them to learn more about us on their own when we're not with them. So basically, this tool is, has multiple purposes. Right now, it's, basic, it's residing under John Hay, who's in charge of the training, and it's being treated as a training tool day one for the sales organization and for Enron employees. However, this it is designed to be used as a sales tool by the direct sales force, it's calling on the ISPs, by the content provider sales force, as well as any channels that we would turn on. So later, it would be a version of a tool that, you, that an ISP would use to sell the value proposition of being e-powered to a customer, a content originator, or to a, an end user that would buy an e-powered connection from an ISP. So there's different target audiences, and that, if you think about it, that's kind of the way the Internet is designed to do, is to allow someone to come in and learn about something and navigate to the information they care about in a nonlinear way and back in, go into some area real deep, back out, and then go somewhere else. And so that's, this is using the, the Internet paradigm. So it's a web-based tool, uh, which is consistent with what we're doing. Well, what, so now I'm going to shift gears, and I'm going to uh, be... Scott Yeager presenting to a customer, and we have used this, uh, like I said, with numerous customers already, and found it to be a very effective way to immediately get across a high-level understanding of what we're doing, and then to drill in and do whatever we want at, at granularity that the customer is requesting with respect to, you know, what our services are all about. So what <clears throat> I start with is that Enron Communications is a new group within Enron that was designed to change the communications industry. And what we're doing is focusing on the um, content or application source on the one end and how you get it to an end user. Now, uh, there's a lot of moving parts in between that, and we focus on all the moving parts, even though we as a company may not own and operate all the elements. So we, we've come up with this concept of you take a content source or an application and you plug in one time to Enron. So we're trying to make it cheap and easy to plug in Enron and then you squirt your application and or content into the Enron Intelligent Network. And the Enron Intelligent Network is a combination of fiber optic cable, bandwidth management technology, and distributed servers and software that rides on top of our network. And it's trying to dial out. That's not a good thing. And, um, and then we have gone out and rather than engineer everything in the end, we said, uh, or own everything in the end, we've said we're going to have a pop in the city and we're going to plug into our partners, which are ISPs, CLEX, ILEX, PTTs, uh, which have existing customers already plugged into them. So by connecting to the Enron Intelligent Network once, you get access to an embedded base of customers globally. And over time, we're going to migrate the end user 
from a uh, low bit rate or a low speed connection like dial up into a broadband connection. So we have a strategy that allows content originators and application service provider originators to, to plug into us and get, get very large reach and over time differentiate themselves with the broadband flavor of their product. Now, at this level, if I was talking to a content provider, I would launch into this area here and say um, that what we're trying to do is make it easy for you as a content originator to differentiate your product. And so we've got a demo section in here, a content showcase, and this immediately launches a movie that happened to be a, uh, and I can turn the sound up, um, it happened to be a movie that we made about Enron Communications at the, um, at the trade show for NAB last year. However, this particular, you could consider this an advertisement about Enron. And uh, it has uh, music and it has words and it, ha and it has uh, animations in it. And in this context, this is a rich media experience that we are um, using to attract someone possibly to our side about us. But if it was another content originator, they could have, uh, they could sell this as advertising space to their customer base. Now, we, we also from here can go in and look at other, in this particular instance, since we're in Ron, we would want to talk to, about our products. So I can go in this uh, section here and have um, movies and animations about our product offering, in this instance, MediaCast. The is now, one of the most the, um, we have other concepts of content providers, obviously. This is, this is a tool that lets me tell you about Enron, but we would also be able to, um, uh, we have some demonstrations of some other um, examples of content providers, in this instance, financial services. So what we have here is a demonstration, uh, and actually Matt's uh, group came up with this. So we've embedded this here so that you can navigate to Matt's demonstration for the financial vertical. Over time, we would have other vertical uh, target demos so that you as a salesperson could sell, if you were in any vertical, a demonstration that is unique to your vertical. So this, this happens to be something the match group produced. Other verticals would produce their own versions, and you'd be able to navigate to that. We, this, we've also put the, uh, the Greenspan demo that we used to have in there uh, up here, so you can use this to demonstrate it. So this is a 28.8 version, and go ahead and turn the sound up on this, because the quality, go ahead and turn it up. So the, As the baby boomers uh, move for retirement, not only is the video quality not very longevity. good, the uh, audio quality is not very good. Makes, uh, so you can demonstrate that, as you go. and then you can go in here and demonstrate a uh, 400 kilobit version. Go in your turn letter of invitation. Today, I will be addressing one of our nation's most pressing So not only is the challenge. video a lot crisper and Namely, cleaner, the Social audio security. is as well. As the baby boomers and this uh, shows how bored that person is, I like to point that out. <clears throat> I like to point out the ruffling of the papers in the background. And now what we're doing is demonstrating what is more like a TV experience on the Internet through uh, the Enron Intelligent Network. Furthermore, the broad support uh, for Social Security... Now, we've also, we also got some other demos. And what we're trying to do here is illustrate the concept of business to business and business to commerce. And so we have a demo here that actually in the online version, you won't not have to do what I'm doing right now, um, which if you, if you were in this instance, this could be an e-commerce uh, platform to sell computer and networking products. So imagine that I'm a manufacturer of computer products or I'm a distributor of a whole host of products, computers, routers, bridges, whatever. I would be able to go in online and navigate to information about that product. And then when I clicked here, I would go online and actually bring up off, off the net the, um, pardon? 
Okay. Next time it comes up, I'll do that. So then I would be able to um, bring up, and of course they tried to go off to the internet and wasn't able to. But um, the, the concept is that an end user is going to navigate to information, content in context. And now where we're doing is blending rich media, which is something like a movie, with some interactive dynamic environment that makes it more interesting to me as an end user and transfers knowledge more rapidly because it is rich media. And, and it puts me in a paradigm where I'm more like in a 3D world navigating to the information I'm interested in and learning more about that product or that service. So this is generic information about servers, generic information about a certain uh, concept, and then I navigate deeper to the more specific product information. So what, we were, what we're trying to do is demonstrate, and we're going to have, we want our customers, as you sign up more and more content providers, we want to be putting them in the content showcase, so that what we'll be able to do is demonstrate different approaches, and, and everybody will have a different approach, to, to um, transferring knowledge and selling your product or service in an e-commerce platform. So if it's business to business oriented, that would be a demo. And then if it's business to consumer, we have another class of demo that brings up a different kind of experience. And again, we want to add, we've come up with these on our own just so you have something to demonstrate. But the goal is in the content showcase area is to bring up our real customers as we sign them up to put them in the content showcase so that under the financial group, we would start having real company names. And under e-commerce, we might have more real company names. And, and as time went on, we might even start, you know, people might fight for this uh, space. But today, we just have to have some demos for you to use just to illustrate the concept to your customer base of content in context, rich media stimulating uh, interest, and in a business environment, you might have one approach, and in an in a entertainment consumer environment, you would have a different approach. Now, this particular tool has a lot of ways to navigate, um, and so I'm going to blend in some, you know, how do you use it con concepts. This basically starts with the content source, ingress, the Enron Intelligent Network, egress, and users, so you can use that to navigate, and if you want to go back to the top level, you can always hit the E. So as, a, as I'm presenting to an end user, depending on who they are and what, and what the target audience is in the room at the time that I'm talking or the questions they ask, I might want to jump around to different areas. The other area that, we're going to, that you'll end up using a lot is the end user area because, again, you want to show to the end, you want to show what the end user experience would be. So this is a similar, uh, again, shell, if you will, and over time, we would want to have different shells of, that represent totally different environments that we would be able to show off. But for now, we're using this as a paradigm of like channels. Now, what we put in this section here is the ability to, to uh, flip from a tool like letting the customer listen to something like a movie, which that's what these movies are here. And, um, and I might want to let especially in the early sales cycle, if I'm not that comfortable yet telling the story, you might want to actually click on and let them listen to the three-minute movie about um, media cast or media transport. However, really what this is intended for is for an end user after you leave to go back in and listen to the story in a scripted way with a narrator and music and all that so that they can hear the story repeated again after you're not there. But, and it also would be something that you would use to learn the script on your own. And what we've done up here in this section is, is say that we want to have, I, we put training as the category later, we may change that. But this lets me tell the story myself. So now pretend that I'm sitting in front of you and I've already kind of gone through the high level story like I did a minute ago. And then they say, well, I'm really interested in this media cast product and I really like to understand how does it really work, then this area this has a lot of different movies in it that are not narrated, that are intended to be narrated by the speaker or the sales rep or someone in front of a group. So this particular movie here, I'm going to go ahead and go through this the way that I would do it with a customer. 
Essentially, Enron allows someone to just click on an application and go out over their local area network, down their riser in their building, down in the street, to where they're connected to some sort of local loop provider. And if, if this was a broadband connection like DSL or a T1, they're connected to their ISP. And at this point, the uh, internet service provider would be connected to Enron via a DS3 or an OC3 broadband local loop, which is connected to our permanent pop inside of a city. And at that point, we look up where they want to go, and we end up sending their traffic over the, the Enron Intelligent Network backbone to the distant city where the content uh, source is. Now, at that point, we route it back over another broadband local loop to one of our partners that could be a CLEC or an ISP that, that has the connection ultimately to the content source. Now this, con this local loop would also need to be broadband, it would need to be a DS3. So at this point, you would, we would route over a, uh, like a DS3 local loop or a T1 to the content source uh, via the partner pop. So I guess I'm... And at that point, the content <clears throat> would be sent uh, out the, the local loop back to the, to the end user that requested it, and that is where the distributed server architecture of Enron comes into play, so that in that instance, the content on demand was really uh, sent from the local server closest to the end user. And in that instance, that's what we're calling the quality of service three, where the uh, end user is connected via an Enron e-powered ISP or CLEC, and the source is connected via an Enron e and is e-powered because they've got a broadband connection in the network. So there was an, a, a broken example of me demonstrating uh, how to use the tool, but also that particular movie, when we used this in San Francisco with a very large content originator who had been looking at Akamai and at Digital Island and iBeam and everybody else who claimed to have um, a very good solution, and they had been out and visited them all. That, that little movie right there, three, four minutes into the sales call, they, it was a very high-end audience, so I, didn't, I went straight to the meet with them. Uh, they instantly got it. They went out and dragged other people into the room to make sure that other people saw it. And when we had our follow-up meeting two days later, where they brought in even more people, they walked in and said, show that fly-through movie immediately so that our guys can understand what you guys bring to the table. And so it is the pictures worth a thousand words concept. And what we're trying to do is get, make it easier for you to transfer to the, the viewer, the end user that you're selling to, what value we bring to the table immediately. Now, we also have one that's on media transport, and I probably won't go through the whole version of that, but the media transport movie is, is similar in the sense that it, it shows what really happens end to end. It shows a live video feed, and then it shows it being converted into IP packets, and it walks you through. Now, of course, the screen prompts you. So again, if some um, viewer wanted to watch that movie on their own, they would still be able to get a message from it, even if you weren't narrating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got to remember, I'm doing this off of a, we're not broadband connected here, so I'm doing it off of CD-ROM. But imagine we went into um, this company at, who, who said that their vision is to create the new medium of the future, that their vision is to create affinity groups that come in and watch content that they uh, either repackage or aggregate, and the new class of content that they create is a, in a production way that differentiates their experience because it's broadband enabled, and that their mission in life is to create a new e-commerce model around that because affinity groups drag people in to watch that content, and then they use real estate like this space up here potentially to sell advertising. They also sell the product, so they have multiple revenue streams. Now, that, that's the starting point, is that that's what their mission in life is. That's what they just went public to do, and they happen to have three-letter type of uh, name, and they happen to be uh, in the business for quite a long time of delivering content to an audience. So we started with that premise, and then all I had to do was say, well, can I use your computer, and does it have IE 5.0 on it? 
which is a technical problem we have with um, Netscape not being able to deliver the same class of experience. So that's why we limited it to IE to Internet Explorer right now. But um, and we and I used their computer over their Ethernet and went off and showed them this experience. And it actually works better off the Internet than it does off the CD-ROM because it doesn't have to wait for the CD-ROM to do all that seek stuff that it's doing right now. And so not only were we showing them the concept of what we were going to do, they knew that the stream that they were watching went over that path I just described. And um, you, you can also do little things like in the middle of the movie, if you want, you can, um, you can make it um, go full screen. David particularly likes to show this on uh, Bullwink and, another, and other very sophisticated content like that. That was a joke. Um, so you can, um, you can blow the screen up and make it go full screen as well. So like in the middle of the meeting we're having, and we're sitting there telling them what we're doing, David turns this thing on, and he's got Boomwinkle running, and then later he has this extreme sports thing where they're climbing the mountain. And they're sitting there talking to us and listening to our story, and you can see them looking over constantly at the screen, and it hadn't burped the whole time. We're like in there for like two hours. And David just periodically just changes the movie that they're watching. So uh, we weren't talking about what we were going to do. We were showing them. And I can tell you that it had a tremendous impact on them. And I would say shrunk the sales cycle or accelerated the timeline dramatically in our discussions and got it from some theoretical, we might want to do business, you know, we're a big company and you're just brand new to the industry, to, so uh, how can we figure out how to accelerate this thing because we need this right away. And, um, and so what, what we've got here is a lot of different clips, I call them, that are used to allow you to sell different concepts. So I've just shown you some on the products. Now this particular movie here, uh, we have two versions of how to tell our entire, I'll call it Enron Intelligent Network underlying uh, infrastructure story and um, and there's this one is like incremental story meaning I can click on this and explain how our uh, advanced fiber transport services works where we went out and laid fiber across the country and then we stuck Sienna uh, wave division multiplexing equipment in and then from that Sienna wave division multiplexing equipment we can plug customers in and we can sell them an OC48 window or a that's a proper improper term now uh, wavelength of light and um, and that that's one of our products but that that product so that's a quick overview of what the product is obviously if they want to get technical we can do that later but that shows that we have physical infrastructure I can also say you know we also as a company are out there buying we want to be the biggest buyer and seller bandwidth and what we're doing is not only uh, one of the ways we're doing it is we're putting our own TDM equipment on top of our own fiber so that we can sell circuits in a traditional way as part of our bandwidth product offerings. So what we're doing there is just illustrating another layer of um, functionality and revenue stream and product offering that's, that's made available to, through our products. And then someone can say, well, tell me all about, well, I jumped over, I'm sorry, let me do this. Um, tell me about this bandwidth trading thing and pulling point concept. So what we can say is that we went out and created a new technology with our partners or vendors that is a pulling point and we put that technology in place and then we can plug OC48s, OC12s or whatever into that and let people buy uh, DS3s or buy OC3s from us, and it, and it doesn't matter who the vendor is between the pooling points, we've made deals with those guys to where we get our hands on bandwidth, and then we can buy it uh, in bulk and sell DS3s, OC3s, OC12s off of that. And so now that adds another layer of services and revenue stream, but it also adds another layer of capabilities into what it is that we're all about. And, and it starts to get out why we're going to be able to be a long-term player even though we may not have the most fiber in the ground. And, and then finally we've got the intelligent network layer that we're putting on top of all of that which is a combination of routers and servers and software and the intelligent network layer can be a discrete thing that runs on its own on its own bandwidth 
um, if we want it to, and it's designed to, to function that way. However, when it, what um, can happen is those IP packets can move across our network for certain applications like streaming media, but there is a way for us to start to interconnect these different layers in the OSI model as well as the physical layers inside of our network and leverage that both for the Enron Intelligent Network services as well as for the, each one of those different layers of revenue and layers in the OSI model. And so what that does for us is it gives us a long-term sustainable way to have, have bandwidth be made available when we need it for any application or for any service offering that we've got. And by plugging our uh, routers directly into the IP layer, we call that pure IP, we're, we're, I mean into the glass, into the CNA equipment, we're able to uh, have more than one way that we get packets in and out of the network and at different layers. And so that's a very unique approach. And, and so those are discrete concepts and ideas on the one hand, but when you combine them all together, it makes a very powerful uh, capability that we bring to the table that really none of the other people have. And I'm talking about even somebody like a, a level three or a um, uh, WorldCom who has uh, tons of fiber, they still don't have access to everybody else's network in, in the manner that we will through our pooling points where we get bandwidth when we need it. Uh, we also, because of the bandwidth intermediation capabilities where we're doing blend and extend contracts, we're able to go out and buy in bulk and we're able to go out and do deals with ISPs and other players to, to help them through their business model. And when you bundle the financial products that Kevin Howard and them are creating, where we can f uh, finance equipment as well as um, uh, bundle that with the bandwidth intermediation and then bundle that with the Enron Intelligent Network. Those are the reasons that we're able to get all these ISPs and CLEX to want to sign up with us because we bring so much value to the table. And um, when you start telling that to a content originator, the content originator looks at you and goes, wait a minute, these people are dead serious about what it is that they're doing. They have more than one way to skin the cat. They're thinking global, they're thinking scale, and I'm going to be putting my content on their network, and I'm going to differentiate my product because of that, and I want to be able to be with someone that can scale with my business. Now, one thing that I want to make sure, this is now I'm going to switch gears on you. I'm not selling you right now as like a, you were a customer. I'm now educating you. The infrastructure that's put in place in most, uh, I'll call them enterprise customers, is they went out and bought years ago TDM networks and plugged all their different sites together, and that's called a private network. And, and they connected those private networks with circuits, and they, the people used different applications over that, and it was usually multi-protocol, it wasn't just IP. Then along came Frame Relay and ATM, and people said, well, I want to have the feel of a private network but I don't want to pay for all that bandwidth. Or they might have left that T1 in place and used maybe SNA traffic and other protocols, but they wanted to now plug their LANs in, so they went out and plugged into frame relay and ATM networks. Now that um, is something that happened over the last six or seven years in a big way, and there's a lot of companies who still have their existing TDM circuit-based network in place because they put voice over it also, and then they have their frame relay or ATM network which they're putting mainly LAN traffic, which implies mainly IP. And then along came this thing called the Internet. So the Internet is this amalgamation of networks, and we've got a lot of ways to tell that story, but it's multiple networks, and they said, well, I'm going to plug into that thing once, and I'm going to go and get content off the Internet and send email in and out of the Internet. But what people, and this is important for people to understand this concept right here, that what's going to happen is when they use that and they send it to people in other parts of their country, they've only got one connection, that creates load either on their private network or on their frame relay network. So the internet actually accelerates the um, breaking of their wide area network to private networks. Now, the concept of connecting to the internet a bunch of times is called a VPN and IP. And that product has been out there, and some ISPs are very successful at selling it, and some are not. But it requires you to have another layer of security, and that layer of security is called a firewall. And what you have to do is put a piece of technology in on the edges of um, everywhere that you connect via the Internet and to make the Internet secure. Now, because the Internet's non-deterministic, it is uh, 
only good for, if you will, certain kinds of applications. So just so you understand in a level set way, when you're talking to a content provider who's trying to sell business to business content to a audience that is businesses, many of the customers that they would call on would probably have a virtual private network like uh, in, in um, Frame Relay or ATM. They would have a circuit-based network for their voice and maybe some of their old-timey video compressed uh, video conferencing technology and, and SNA for host mainframes, and they would usually have one connection to the Internet. So this is a level set that I'm giving you, is that that's the infrastructure that's in place in many instances. Now, uh, the reason you need to understand that is that if you don't understand what they've got, you won't be able to understand how we can add value when we come into the picture. What we're doing is a little bit different. Rather than saying to the world, throw away your old private network, it's no good, or throw away your frame relay network and go to us, which is the traditional carrier view, or do the ISP thing, which is throw away your old networks and put everything on the internet, and we'll make you know, our network so bad that we'll just you know, make it work like great if, if you're just plugged into us everywhere, which is an IP VPN approach. We're saying uh, all that stuff's fine for what you're doing. However, those new applications that you're um, trying to roll out that are bandwidth hogs, we're the network for that. Now, what this, this does is if you're a content originator, specifically, and you want to put streams out there that are business oriented, and you want to create an e-commerce environment like I showed you a minute ago that would have streams embedded in it and let people navigate to information about your product and then learn more about it and then eventually buy, then, then you would uh, go to an enterprise and say, uh, if you were trying to sell that product about your content, and the enterprise would say, well, you know, I don't want it to break my wide area network. So what we're, we've got here is a, um, a little kind of a movie about how you would be able to uh, create the concept of communities of interest and uh, at the application layer. And what this helps you do is illustrate that on a per application basis now, someone could have their private network, but they could have a new approach on a per application basis, and that would be Enron. They can still have the Internet, but then the Enron Intelligent Network isn't for everything. It's really only for those applications that are more broadband oriented, and you could be something like desktop video conferencing or something like streaming media for, for, uh, for a content originator. So uh, this little clip is used to either illustrate the, the concept of a community of interest uh, around an application uh, like conferencing or to illustrate the concept around something like streaming media and you as a content originator want to touch an enterprise in a subscription model and your content is something like, let's say, financial information that's high quality and you want to differentiate it. So now back to the Internet model versus the um, VPN model versus the Enron Intelligent Network, you could actually, as a content originator, have a gradient of products that are low quality but have global reach that attract people in and then sell them, upsell them to something like a um, VPN flavor of a subscription model for your content because you only let them see the differentiated version. Let's say the 400 kilobit or one meg content is only available in a subscription way if you're a business-oriented content originator. And, but you use the internet flavor, which is non-deterministic and is not as high quality to attract your audience to sign up. So there's a lot of different ways that you're going to have to help the content originator understand how we add value and how they would use that value to create their own products. There's also, you can use this, these same stories if you're the sales force selling to the ISPs to illustrate how our network works, but also how we are going to go out proactively and get content originators on our network. And I think if you, people don't understand the community of interest concept, then they won't understand how, the, like the NBC people are talking about affinity groups get created and that the content is what creates the affinity group. The value is in the differentiated flavor of that content, and that's what we deliver, and that that is ultimately how you're going to lead people to e-commerce. <clears throat> now, there's one other movie that, that we're actually got a new version that will be out for the um, 
analyst meeting, but this one works to illustrate the, the concept the that if someone says, so what are you trying to do? You know, I don't quite get it. Say, so, well, we're creating the desktop of the future. And actually, the desktop of the future is a little misnomer because it could be a TV set as well, ultimately. But what is happening is that people want to be able to experience something over what you would have called an IP network at their desktop, and eventually if we have a set-top box, it would be a TV set, that is informative. And so the end user is used to, on a local area network, being able to get that content fast. So if you use the benchmark of a local area network and a response time at the screen at a local area network as what everybody wants to have, regardless of where the content is, what we're doing is enabling an end user to click on something and go across the land to a server, go out in the street, across town, to another location where a server is, and get at that content or that information in a sub-second response time way so that it feels like it's all local. And ultimately, if they want to go across country, uh, which they will, then they're going to want to be able to get that content also in a sub-second response time way, which means it's fast and it feels local. Now, um, that's not possible over the Internet, and so what we're doing is wiring around all the problems associated with that in making it possible for an end user who is sitting at their desk to click on something, whether or not they're at home or at work, and get that information in a sub-second response time way or fast, uh, regardless of where that content is. So this is another way of telling at a high level our story about what it is that we're doing now, there's a lot of technical things that those little blue and red and yellow lines represent that those other movies are about. It's like, how do you do it? So there's the what you're doing, and then there's how you do it. And depending on the target audience you're talking to, you may have to flip back and forth between those things. Um, because some end users, I mean, some people you'll be talking to, understand what it is they want to do. They just don't know how you're going to make it possible. Others are going to want you to illustrate to them what is possible with the services that we bring to the table. And that's part of the problem of pioneering a market. I mean, we are, let's not forget, we're changing the industry, we're changing the world. When you do that, you will have a whole gradient of people with a different knowledge base and experience. And so uh, what we're trying to do is make it possible for you as a salesperson to on the fly in front of an audience figure out their knowledge kind of by the feedback and the questions and then flip to what's important. So if they need a really technical story told, you can do that. If they need a um, conceptual story about what are, you, what are you doing, then we're going to have that. This environment that we've created here will hopefully never, it will never stop being added to. We're, everything that we're doing for the analyst meeting is going to be embedded in this environment. So there, you'll be able to go in and get at more and more information about the Enron Intelligent Network, about our products and services, and you'll be able to get to more and more granularity about that as you move deeper. So, for instance, right now, if you go in here, someone say, well, what does a pop look like? You might want to be able to go in and, ex and explain what a pop looks like, and so we've added this new feature where it illustrates what a city pop looks like. Now, we just put this out just this week for, you, for this meeting. The goal is to be able to make all of these different devices hot, where you could go learn about a Sun server, learn about a Cisco router, learn about a LAN gigabit switch, because, you know, back to selling to you guys, you got to remember, when we say we have a badass network, we have gigabit routers. Say, Gary, which one do I use? That one? Do you know Dow? Thank you. So we've got um, we've got gigabit routers, not um, 7500s like most ISPs, and gigabit routers allow us as a service provider to have a national backbone that's very robust, but they also allow us to aggregate lots of broadband local loops. So we need to not forget that there's two pieces to this: the aggregation of broadband into our backbone and the delivery of broadband back out. So that's one area that we have. We put in LAN switches, and those LAN switches are gigabit LAN switches, which means that not only can they talk to a router in a gigabit way, but they can talk to servers, and lots of them. 
Now, if you notice here, we have the Unix platform and the Windows platform. So you'll be able to talk about, over time, you'll learn more about you know, where we are, and someday we'll probably have some server that represents a, a Linux platform. But so even any picture like this will evolve over time. But what we want to be able to do is rapidly communicate to them that we're building a very robust, scalable, carrier class way of delivering rich media content for you to create a differentiated product to your customer base. Or if it was an ISP, we're doing all that so we can sign up lots of content sources for you to have more rich content so you can sell more connections to the internet. And so you got to flip it depending on who your audience is. But uh, what, I, what I intend to have in here is movies of the real pop tours so that we'll be able to, to talk about it in a conceptual way and we'll be able to talk about it by letting people see the real thing. Now, over here is the egress side. And on the egress side, we have the concept of a city pop that you've just seen, and it would take you to the same thing. Now, later, we may make that um, look different, but today it's the same. And then we got an ISP pop. Now, an ISP pop today, this is a generic version of it. It's a big one, obviously, right? So we would, I would want to have more and more, as we saw, to, they're coming up with different flavors of pop deployments. We would want to have the different flavors. We'd want to have a satellite pop. We'd want to have, you know, I'll call it a small ISP pop and then a major ISP pop. But again, you should be able to navigate to the information and explain to an ISP, well, you know, we've got, this is a, a, a configuration that we might get to someday when we have thousands of streams, simultaneous users coming in and out of your pop, and then you should be able to click on something and show them a movie of that. So we will be constantly adding richness to our story as we go through this. Um, as you can tell, I'm navigating a lot of different ways. These layers here are designed, you can just navigate back and forth between that, uh, and you can always go to the top layer by going here. Now, as you go deeper, right now, I particularly don't like what I get to next. I want to have more, more information that's more rich media next. But you do eventually get to a form of content that's more traditional web looking. And uh, this now, again, is geared really more towards a customer. Think of this as the leave behind. You've gone through the entire broadband experience. You've taught them what we're all about. And now they want to start reading more about what, we, what we're really all about and what we say. And they, and they want to go in and get more text-oriented things. Um, on the ingress side, we also have um, something that, that uh, and this is, this is like a little jewel hidden here that people need to know about. So what this is, is Gary Egan did a white paper. And the white paper is on how you as a content originator ought to um, um, encode your content so that it works well over the Enron Intelligent Network. Now, you know, you can hand this white paper out, but if you went in here and looked at this, and Gary did a tremendous job of writing this and, and doing a lot of screen capture uh, so that you can, you know, see as well as read about. So this is, this is an example of where there's some information buried in here that's very useful that you might use in the sales cycle, but you're probably going to use it more in a leave-behind way. Um, we also have a database of movies. Now, this is, an, is to help you navigate the stuff, but it also illustrates another concept. It ta it's back to us eating our own cooking. If, if you believe that you need a rich media experience to, to engage people, and to transfer knowledge and therefore get, accelerate the sales cycle on something, well, that's what we're doing here. Now, what we've done is have all these movies put in a database. Because there's a metafile about those, the, this experience, the broadband experience, is actually bringing up movies out of the database and serving them up to the end user. We can create different profiles for users that would serve up a different experience. And we haven't done that part yet, but the point is that this whole thing is built in a database way, and that's what the content originators want to do, is they want to create an experience for an affinity group that might have 10 pieces of content that are used in affinity group one, six in affinity group two, and nine in affinity group three. In each one of those, there could be like five of them that overlap in all of them. Now, what that does is it allows them to take some content they've got, like, let's say, Bullwinkle in an entertainment sense, or let's take CNN, FN in a, in a business way, 
and make it available to their community of interest or their affinity group in different ways through a database-driven approach. The only way that you can do that is to have what's called a directory at the front end, and the directory is what recognizes your profile as a user and then serves that up dynamically. Now, we don't have a directory version of streaming media made available yet in our product offering, but that is on the drawing board as a feature that we would add later to have a common directory model, and we are working with uh, industry players on that. The reason that's important, again, is that it gets back to scalability. Over time, if I had to replicate the 10 pieces of content for Affinity Group 1, again for Affinity Group 2, and again for Affinity Group 3, the amount of file sizes that I would have to keep up with to make this rich media content available just gets astronomical. It's going to be bad enough as it is. So over time, if I'm serious about creating the new differentiated experience as a content originator, I'm going to want to know that my provider that I'm dealing with, which is Enron Communications, has thought through not only the bandwidth problem, not only the caching problem, not only the streaming media problem, but ultimately how am I going to make this thing scale through a directory approach. So this is a demo of a directory approach that we're using internally just to do our own broadband site. We also have PowerPoints in here, and um, these PowerPoints are, I'll call them older versions. For instance, all the stuff we're seeing today, I'm going to want to get new versions put in there. And it's going to bring up the PowerPoint related to the area you're in, and that's another database-driven thing. Now, we're going to, we have a, when you do this online, it would force you to put in a password uh, because we don't want to let people get out our internal PowerPoints. Uh, if you go back to this area, though, we do have, in this area, we've put our ECI overview PowerPoint here. So if a customer says, okay, great, I understand all that, but you know, I kind of want to see how it really works, and, and they want a more PowerPoint flavor of a presentation, you would be able to go in here and bring up a PowerPoint. Now, this particular one is, I'll call the latest version up till recently, when now it, we've just seen a bunch of new versions out there. And um, this gives you the ability to flip back and forth in the sales call with your customer between a more traditional linear way of telling a story, which is a PowerPoint, and a nonlinear way of telling the story, which is a web environment. And um, again, you're going to have to gauge your audience as to which approach you take, because with some people, they'll say, you know, just give me a quick overview, and you can go through our backbone, and you can go through our build and our products, intelligent network, and do this kind of a presentation fast. And actually, I love the stuff that um, Kirk did. That's the new flavor of these, so we're going to want to get that put in here. But in, in this tool, you have the ability as a sales rep to use this kind of approach, especially if you're not that comfortable with some of the other stuff early on, or just depending on your target audience. So we're trying to make it possible for you to have these tools, but I want, you, I want to always emphasize that these tools and this approach is really what we believe the future is about about any product, about any service, consumer-oriented or business-oriented. Okay. <laughs> Let me take a sip of water. <laughs> you went to turbo mode. Okay, I got five minutes. God, man, that went by fast. Um, so... <clears throat> Thank you, David, for the support. We must be as the wolf pack, not the six pack. Okay, five minutes. So what I want to leave you with is I've blasted you, obviously, with a lot of information. I've combined the concept of a tool with, uh, you know, examples of how I use the tool. So you need to learn, you need to get the tool. We're going to get you the CD. You need to go online and use it. And John will be having more formal training around all this. But we do have a tool now, and we didn't have one before, that would really illustrate what it is we're all about and let you navigate to things. But I think that what, what I want you to understand is that we really do absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, have the most robust network in place for delivering rich media on the planet Earth, period. We also have 
the most aggressive position in the context that we're already working on improving it. And you're gonna, if you were in the other sessions, you'd be hearing about it. But when, when you get in front of a big content originator that has been thinking about these issues for years, and you use these kinds of tools and you illustrate what we're doing, and then you get them fired up enough to go on and come to Portland and go to LA and come to Houston and see the facilities we put in place, I'm telling you, it's slam dunk. They are not, they're not saying, oh, Akamai's got this. They're not saying Digital Island has that. Those guys are not on the radar screen. So what we got to do is just ourselves believe, number one, first, educate ourselves so we absolutely are religious that we are the best on the planet Earth. You should be no doubt in your mind. If there's any doubt, find somebody like me or somebody else to help take that doubt away. There should be no doubt, okay? Because I'm telling you, it's the truth. So if there's doubt, it's because you don't understand. The tools in here are to help you understand and to transfer that knowledge to customers. Local area networks, wide area networks, metropolitan area networks, if you don't understand that, there's stuff in here about there. If you don't understand how the maze work and the congestion works, we got stuff that, that'll show you that. And we got a new version that's coming out, we can show you. So number one, you gotta become a believer. You gotta be personally understand it so much so that there's nobody who can convince you differently, number one. Number two, after you understand that, when the customer starts throwing all this stuff at you, you're going to be able to instantly recognize their lack of understanding and navigate to the thing that gets them over that barrier. And it may take a while with some, and it may take a while with others. And what I found is sometimes their lack of understanding is based on their lack of understanding that the broken internet model. So that's why we've got a lot of things in here and the new versions of the, for the analyst presentation. They're going to illustrate beyond a shadow of a doubt, why the internet's broken, what the financial broken part of the internet is about hot potato routing, and how that won't, no matter how much bandwidth you throw at it, it won't fix it. So that's another element. <clears throat> then the third thing is that you've got to also personally believe, and I don't believe, think you can believe it if you don't use these kinds of tools yourself, that, that there is a new medium being created, and that that new medium doesn't exist, and we're inventing it. Enron's inventing it with you, the content originator. So it's like up to you, the content originator, to work with me, Enron, to change the world because you can go out and kick ass in your marketplace because you're using us. And, and if you can get them to understand that we're gonna be there next month, next year, 20 years from now, having created that, what they need to understand and what you need to understand is it's 1948 and black and white TV just came out and the, everybody's listening to radio and reading the newspaper. That's a new medium, black and white TV. And in 1962 or whenever it was, color TV came out and all those black and white TVs got thrown out in about, you know, two years. So what's happening is we are the new medium and we're the combination of all that stuff. And, and we're kind of like the combination of the airwaves and the networks like NBC, ABC, CBS bundled together in this interactive dynamic environment that's more ultimately like a video game than it is like a TV show. And, and so uh, we as a group need to understand that end state that we're creating so that we can transfer that knowledge to the content originators of which many of them think all they're really doing is putting TV on the internet. And, and when they think that, that's like step one, but that's really not the end state that they should even be going for. So we, we have to understand it, it has to be in our soul, we gotta believe it down to our core, and if we do, and we get in front of those customers, uh, and they understand, and we transfer that knowledge to them, they're gonna have the same religion you've got. And we've seen it happen, in the, actually in the last three or four months, every time I've gone in front of anybody, he said, well, I don't get this internet thing, or this, I don't, you know, I don't see why I need streaming media, or, you know, Akamai, or whatever they say. By the end of the time that we finish talking to them, they're not saying that anymore. Because they understand that they have an opportunity to work with us, and they get to have an opportunity to change the world, and they have an opportunity to become a leader, and they have an opportunity to become what you would think of as an NBC, because in their vertical or in their content area, 
there is no player yet that has a rich media broadband experience. And they get to invent it with us, and then they get to take a leadership role. And we call that killer applications. So we're putting people, we're putting killer apps up on our network, we're enabling them, and, and we're in the business of enabling those killer apps to go out in their marketplace and kick ass in their marketplace on our network. So David, do you want to take over now? <laughs> Woo!